All right, so uh, Kojo Yang Singh's book, uh, which is Messages from the Morning Man, his book, the soft copy is 30 Ghana CDs, the hard copy is 50 Ghana CDs, and you can get a copy of the book at Challenge Bookshop, read wide, or the Ligon Bookstore. Ligon Bookstore. Grab a copy, very inspiring messages he's got in there. And today, I am talking to Samuel Jonathan. Yes, we've got another class today. Uh, and today, we're actually talking about the dynamics of delivery. Dynamics of delivery. But before we get into the dynamics of delivery, though, why don't we just recap what we've been doing? Uh, I think we've had three sessions so far. We're going to box all of them together briefly. Uh, and Samuel Jonathan is president at the Royal Center for Public Speaking. Mr. Jonathan, Hi, good Jonathan. morning. Like I am... <laughs> good morning. You the inflection. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? I am very well, thank you. Good, Always. Good, good. You're good yourself? Happy as usual. All right. Uh, so why don't we do a little recap mm -hmm. uh, of the things that we've discussed so far here on the show. And I love this because repetition is the mother of learning. Mm. We started off with the art of public speaking and we reminded everyone that public speaking is an art. And art is an expression of self. So for that reason, don't try and be someone else. Don't pick up a foreign accent that's not yours. You can emulate, but don't imitate. Be yourself. And then we focus on the three daily habits of world-class speakers. And we reminded folks at home that these are daily habits, not weekly. And because public speaking is an art, if you don't continually practice or engage in public speaking, you may have a certificate, but eventually you may flop and fumble when you're called upon six months after you finish the public speaking class because you did not continually engage in public speaking. Those three daily habits are reading, because readers are leaders, and you cannot give knowledge that you don't have, so reading is important. Second one was writing. And one habit of speakers, world-class speakers, if they think it, they ink it. So before you know it, they have a journal of notes they have taken over a time. So when the MD says, you know what, you're going to be given the opening speech at such and such, they are ready because they put themselves in the third habit, which is rehearsing. So reading, writing, and rehearsing. And then we moved on to communicating effectively because there's a difference between being effective and being efficient. We spoke about the three Vs, verbal, mm -hmm. what you say, vocal. How you say, you say it. it, and then visual, what the audience sees, your gesture, your posture, your mannerisms, your facial expression, and we realize that the habits that we shared with folks earlier on are connected to those three things, very, very important, the verbal. Mm. If a person does not master the language, how can you speak fluently in a language that you have not mastered? Mm. And if you don't broaden your vocabulary, you keep on using common phrases like, as you all know, <laughs> plans are in the pipeline. Plans are far advanced. advanced. Modalities are in place. We are on it. Stakeholders, capacity building. People are repeatedly using these same phrases because we are lazy to learn. What can I find as a replacement for stakeholders? If I'm reading the news today and I said there was a stakeholders conference, if I'm reading the news tomorrow, do I still use stakeholders? Mm capacity building and so on. So every word matters and these are the important tips. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, but today we're doing the dynamics of delivery. That's right. And as we would like to do it really, <laughs> we want to have a feel of how it is done. So that's you right. can critique it. Yes. Is that correct? That's right. Uh, that's why we're also being joined by the beautiful Ajobaini. She's going to do a presentation. So, Ajo, if you can just join us here. Uh, what is Ajo going to be doing? Ajo is going to give a very brief presentation on a favorite topic, a topic of her choice, and she has chosen to speak on blood group. Isn't that right, Ajo? Yeah, that's right. That's right. From the perspective of um, a Japanese doctor called Dr. Danamo. Okay. Um, we have different blood types. There's an O type, personal O type, and these have the personality of being generally defined as warriors because it's the oldest of all blood types. Highly motivated and like to lead people, not afraid to take risks and confident about being successful. They are strong, I mean physically strong, and also have a strong physical presence. Generally good at sports. As leaders, 
they can often be seen as status seeking and obs obsessive in their quest for success. And their quest for success can make them seem boring to other people. The, the type B blood group have the personality of being defined as hunters, non conventional and not influenced by other people's opinion. They are thick skinned, extremely passionate about things dear to them, may seem shallow and lazy to other people because they might do, not do what other people request. They can be impatient if they don't get their own way. The type, the type A personality is defined as farmers, considered conventional in all they do, considerate to other people and find it hard to tell lies. Loyalty towards friends and co-workers is another trait. They can be secretive, so don't often share their feelings and can become insecure and pessimistic. They can overreact after a few drinks. Now, the final blood group is the AB. They are considered as humanists. They are quite rare. They go with the head rather than the heart. They like accord among people and therefore play a good role as a mediator within a group. They are also good with money. Unfortunately, because they try to please everyone, they can seem to be two-faced. Now, just a little you know, hint on what blood really is or what this blood group are. Blood is actually a tissue and contains red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, plasma and serum or serum. The APA blood group refers to the four different blood groups types that are determined by a pair of genes inherited from each of one's parents. There are, there, are, there are molecules known as antigens located on the surface of red blood cell, also known as erythrocytes. I guess some of us know about these. The ABO blood group system was determined over 100 years ago. At the beginning of the 20th century, an Australian scientist, Carl Landsteiner, noted that RBC of some individuals were agglutinated, that is, they clumped together by the serum from other individuals and made notes of the pattern of agglutination, and this marked the discovery of the blood group system, ABO, and was awarded a Nobel Prize. Later, a German scientist, One, explained the presence of blood groups. Well, what are some other uses of the blood group? That's the ABO system. Um, people use the blood group system for diet these days. It has been linked with stomach ulcers, gastric cancer, and some individuals due to their blood types. Ability for blood clotting due to the levels of a certain protein molecule in one's blood. Okay. All right. <laughs> Can we? Uh, okay. So this is a presentation to to what to our viewers, to viewers essentially to, to all of us. Yes. Okay. So um, <laughs> like we would do if it was you know like a conference or yes. we're in the conference room would clap. So I say thank you, Ajabai, <laughs> for the delivery. Thank you very You're much. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, so we're talking the dynamics uh, of delivery dynamics of delivery uh, with uh, Samuel Jonathan uh, who is the president at the S Royal Center for Public Speaking uh, Ajubaini just gave us uh, was it a presentation or a delivery what is wrong with that she did a good job Aju did a good job the question is is better possible and at the Royal Center for Public Speaking we believe that if better is possible then good is not enough mm. she did good First and foremost, if this was a formal presentation like we told her that you're making a presentation to an audience and that's what you should presume, you have to first of all break the ice with your audience. You've got to break, you've got to court your audience. You cannot connect with your audience that you have not courted first and foremost. So your opening remarks should be essential. You say, ladies and gentlemen, I'm so glad for the opportunity to speak to you this morning. I know we're all eager to learn a thing or two about blood groups, and I'm going to be here to address that. I'm going to start off with defining what blood groups are. I'll let you know the various blood group types, and then we'll move on to how these different blood groups may reflect in your personality, your lifestyle, and personality traits. So that's, so let's that's, get started. that's your, that's your, your intro, and it's more of a, a, a sudden summary of what to expect. There you go, because the expectation helps give birth to manifestation. People know what to expect. So within the opening seconds of your speech, you must be able to answer that question in that person's mind, what's in it for me? Adjo, why should I listen to you? Tell me why now is a bad time for me to go to the toilet. 
<laughs> Why should I keep my blessed assurance on this seat if I've already listened to two or three speakers? You must answer that during the first opening seconds. Now you've got your audience good forward. Now they know what to expect. So when you give an idea, an overview of what to cover, it helps you, the speaker, stay in line. Because many a times we can become a loose cannon on stage just because we've been told you've got so many minutes. Mm. How many minutes did we tell Adjo? We told her two. She went beyond the four. two minutes. Yeah. yeah. She went more than 100% in the time. And many speakers do that. So you have to remember when you're invited to speak, part of your preparation should be asking how much time is allocated mm. to me? What's the duration of my speech? And then you ask yourself, how much time do I have to prepare this? And then what do the audience need to know within those two minutes? Mm. Because being eloquent is important. However, being disciplined is even more important. So as a disciplined speaker, you must stay within the time frame allocated to you. There are other things I can point out, but I can tell there's a question in your heart. Yeah, yeah, there <laughs> is. I was actually waiting for, I wasn't paying a lot of attention, mm. honestly. I was watching her, but not, I, I couldn't hear her. I mean, Do she was speaking, why? but I couldn't hear her. Do you know why? And then <laughs> when she got to the, bl the blood group, which is, is it AB? Mm -hmm. That was when I got interested. Do and I was waiting why? for my blood group, but uh -huh. it had passed. <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't remember what she said. And this happens a lot. You see, everyone can talk. But when it comes to speaking, you need the right procedures to follow. The reason why you paid attention when she got to the various, she said, now, let's look at the various blood types. She did a very mini, what we call a mini intro of the next section. That's why we call it the dynamics of delivery. Mm. How do I transition from my introduction to the main body? Now that I've gone to the main body, can I compartmentalize that main body so that people understand? Ladies and gentlemen, let's first of all start off with understanding what is a blood group. When you say that, you've prompted the audience that, look, don't miss this. Just like Jesus saying, verily, verily, I say unto you. <laughs> you see, so people now say, ah, all right, what is a blood group? And now they listen uh -huh. for the definition because people cannot have comprehension without the definition. She didn't define it. So when she got to that segment where she said, now let's look at the blood groups, then you got, it got your attention because she gave a mini introduction of what she's about to talk about. Without that overview, you will lose your audience. That's mm. why yesterday we were talking about connecting with your audience. Mm. Another reason why she did not have your attention like I do right now <laughs> is because yeah. you saw more of her eyelids than her eyeballs. The eyes are the windows of the soul. You cannot connect with an audience that you're not focused on. But she on. was reading, so what were you expecting? She was reading, so she ought to have mastered her material. There's what we call M3. Not the BMW M3, but M3 as in master my material. Oh. When I master my material, I can start off a sentence and finish it off while looking into the eyes of my audience because I have mastered my material. That's why we didn't impose a topic on her. We said pick a topic that you're most comfortable with, one of your choice. Meaning that's something that you're so conversant and comfortable with. Mm. Yet, her focus was more on the paper than the audience. So we have to keep that in mind when our viewers watching. When people see your eyelids, when you see my eyelids right now and I, I just sit like this, what's the impression you have? Maybe I'm falling asleep? But if my eyes are open, I'm alive. If you want to keep that connection with the audience alive, they need to see your eyeballs. What about paper management? That's what we call paper etiquette 101. Paper, one coming after mm -hmm. the other. And I know she was mic'd, but what about if she had a powerful omnidirectional mic? The rattling of the paper will go into the microphone, come out of the speakers at the conference center. Of National Theatre. Maybe we put her on, you know, on the spot because That's this is true. live. This is live. And so she probably didn't mm -hmm. have time. Okay, so how is it going to be? Would I would I have a table where I'll put the papers? That's true. Okay, but I guess it's for all of us to also think about. You have to consider a lot of things. That's true. Even when you're on the spot. And then very reconnaissance. You ask ahead of time. Will I have a podium? Will I have a lecture? Will there be a pulpit? So when we were talking yesterday about venue reconnaissance, you said. Do I need to go and inspect the venue? Yeah. Yes, you do. Now, can you imagine if she had to hold a microphone? How many hands left does she have to hold the paper? So once again, this is not to critique her, but this is to create awareness to our viewers 
that these things are important. Mm. And when you do your venue reconnaissance, you know, would I have a cordless microphone or would it be corded? Because mm. you may trip over that microphone if you have not practiced with a corded microphone. Don't presume that the venue will have a cordless microphone. Fantastic dynamics of delivery. Yeah. Uh, but with the, the class itself, I mean the original class, <laughs> the one that you have to be a part of to know a lot more about some of these things we're talking about because often it's best when you practice what is being taught. That's when you get to know, okay, yeah, now I've grabbed it. That class is starting tomorrow. Yes, it is starting tomorrow. It's going to be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Mm -hmm. There may be someone who may be wondering, why do I have to come for three days? We had a text message from someone earlier this week saying, oh, Mr. Johnson, I would have come. I, if it were two hours, I would have come. But since it's three days, I'm not coming. Wait a minute. You want to go for a public speaking class and perfect public speaking in two hours? And if you're 40 years old, you have lived for over 350,000 hours. How can a two-hour workshop impact, influence, and transform how you speak? Mm. So it's three days. It comes with a lifetime guarantee. Is it a whole day? Friday it's 8 from 8 a.m. AM. to 4.30 p.m. Okay. For those who are whining, oh, I can't miss church. Tell your pastor, pastor, I'm trusting God for the anointing of eloquence <laughs> and the grace to speak. And I'm going to a man of God class of Samuel Jonathan. He's going to be coaching us for three days. So, Pastor, find someone else's Sunday to lead worship. I'll join you the following Sunday, and I'll do you proud when I stand up to the microphone to speak. How much would it cost to be a part of this one? The regular fee is 975 CDs. Okay. But for the AM show viewers, we've given that 35% discount to make it 600 Okay. And they still get the lifetime guarantee, cost materials, and yes, they will be fed. Oh, is that's it item also, number that's 13? Is that what we call it in Ghana? Yeah. Item number yeah, well, number but that's not the focus. But then again, it's good for them to know that they'll be fed and refreshed. Mm. Okay. Yeah. All right, Samuel Jonathan. The phone Thank number you. to call. Oh, yeah, the phone number to call. Yeah, definitely. Before you <laughs> All right, here we go. 026 22 325. 026 22 <laughs> Three two five. Three two five. And for those who are internet savvy, Royal Center for Public Speaking dot com, and they can register there. You don't have to buy registration forms. Royal Just Center register. for Public Speaking dot com. Dot com yes. Okay, Samuel so, Jonathan, thank you for for the lectures, really, because I have learned so much oh, uh, wow. from these few days, and I hope that you out there, uh, you've also taken note, but make sure that you're part of the class because that's where you grab a lot of things. Uh, one more thing before we wrap up the show. We're talking the SIP Ghana Branding sum uh, Summit, the SIP Ghana Branding Summit with Mr. Sylvester Fish right here on the AM show. So stay right there. <laughs>